Warning, this podcast contains themes of extreme violence and murder. Subject matter may be offensive to some listeners. Discretion advised. He is just one sick bastard. (laughs) I would do anything if I could have stopped him. I know I couldn't have stopped him. I tried to stop him. Welcome to another episode of Evil Transgression, your homicide headquarters here in podcasting. I'm Josh, and with me as always, Dustin and Rex. Hey, what's up? What's going on? We have a set of killers today. A duo. A set? Really? We get two today? Two for the price of one. Ooh. That's a good deal. And their uh, they're, they're killer names... Mm-hmm. Sounds like a '80s metal band, <laughs> yeah. like an air band. <laughs> Before we get into that, everybody doing good today? Yeah, doing great. <laughs> doing great. Yep, pretty good. I don't know why you shook your head at me. I, Be, because I know this is going to take a long time to record. <laughs> uh, why? Because <laughs> you're already talking. <laughs> you're, you're already talking about the hair bands and uh, hair, that is just gonna be rough. Yeah, it's a good, why are you gonna laugh? Yes, yes, <laughs> I am. I can feel it. You feel it in your down plums. in your <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Good day. Everybody's week was good. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. You know, just work, I, which makes it suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's work, eat dinner, and go to sleep. Get up and repeat. Yeah. I'm just... Uh, then we, we do this on the weekends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. We're never, we're never resting. Nope. It's all for the evil mob. That's why we do it. We do it for you guys. And we, and we think it's pretty fun. Yeah, it is. It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so today's episode is on... The Love Slave Killers. Sounds interesting. The Love Slave Killers. Give it up! (laughs) (laughs) For the Love Slave Killers. (laughs) Uh, So, if you guys are ready, we we can jump right in. Yeah, might as well. Let's do it. All right, Evil Mob. Buckle up as we discuss the Love Slave Killers. Gerald Armand Gallego was born July 17, 1946, in Sacramento, California. Gerald grew up not knowing his father, because Gerald's father was serving time in San Quentin for an unknown crime when Gerald was born. Nine years later, Gerald's father would kill a police officer in Mississippi. After being in prison for some time, Gerald's father got the idea to escape. While attempting to escape, he would kill a corrections officer by throwing acid in his face, which I don't know how an inmate got acid. Mm, Brutal. That was going to be my question. And then he beat the officer to death. That's a horrible way to go. Yeah. Yeah. The craziest part of all of this is we've been talking about Gerald's father and not Gerald. Right. Like this Mm -hmm. This is the family that this kid's coming from. On March 13th, 1955, the elder Gerald was the first man to be executed in Mississippi's new gas chamber. Still had that new car smell. (laughs) (laughs) Take a deep whiff of that, Gerald. Mm. (laughs) That'll learn you not to kill police officers. (laughs) As you can tell, we are off to a great childhood so far. Gerald's mother never told him the truth about what happened to his dad. She just told him it was an accidental death. He accidentally got put in the gas chamber and died. <laughs> well, I mean, they didn't. He didn't have Google back then. He couldn't Google pops and see what happened. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's you know. true. That was uh, uh, 
It was 1955, though. Not, yeah, but didn't we just get Google like 10 years ago? Yeah, but I mean... It's been around longer. longer. <laughs> <laughs> 90s, bud. <laughs> so Gerald uh, started his own crimes early as well. At age 13, he was caught having sex with a six-year-old neighbor girl. Not really sure what kind of trouble he got in with that, but... And he was how old? 13. Wow. Gerald would go on to be married uh, six times uh, and be in and out of jail during those six times. So those six marriages didn't work out. They didn't last. I don't know why. (laughs) (laughs) People just want so much from somebody, I guess. Just stay out of prison, Gerald. Just stay (laughs) out of prison. Gerald, you just got to stay out of jail. (laughs) I can't. It's my life. (laughs) It's my life during the day. (laughs) So, but uh, uh, when he met his seventh and final wife at a poker club, they instantly fell in love. Ooh, lucky number seven. Yeah. At a poker club. That probably was it, too. Like, (laughs) I'm feeling lucky. (laughs) Give me number seven. He probably lost at the poker club and was like, eh, well, I got her, so yeah. <laughs> it's not all that bad. <laughs> and she was a winner, I will tell you that. Charlene Adele Williams was born October 10th, 1956, in Stockton, California, but ended up growing up in Sacramento, California. Another Sacramento native. Mm-hmm. Sacramento must be the capital of killers. <laughs> <laughs> There's some crazy people in Sacramento, California. Yeah, yeah there, there is. is. These early years. Charlene came from a loving and caring home, which will make you wonder what happened uh, to, for her to end up with a real winner like Gerald. Um, Maybe the whole bad boy thing turned her on. It may, it may have, been. have been. It may have been. On September 11th, 1978, Gerald and Charlene would begin their reign on terror. 17-year-old Rhonda Scheffler and 16-year-old Kippy Vaught were walking to their local shopping center when they were approached by Gerald and Charlene, at which time Gerald pulled out a handgun and threatened the two girls. After forcing them into the van, the girls were tied up. Gerald sexually assaulted both girls. After Gerald and Charlene were done with the girls, Gerald beat them each with a tire iron and then shot them both in the head mm. because the tire iron to the head wasn't enough. Right. Apparently. It's terrible. Two days later, police would find the badly beaten bodies of the two young girls. Gerald and Charlene did not waste much time before committing their next evil crime. On June 24th, 1979, 14-year-old Brenda Judd and 13-year-old Sandra Colley were at their local fair in Reno, Nevada, when they went missing. The two young girls were lured away by Gerald and Charlene by asking them if they wanted to make some money delivering leaflets. After the girls got in the van, Charlene drove until they were out of Reno. So that's not a good sign if you're a teenage girl in um, uh, at the fair in Reno, and you're like, hey, oh, let's eat some cotton candy, ride the Ferris wheel, and... Charlene and uh, Gerald come up to you like, you want to make a couple bucks? Yeah. And you're like, sure. It's 1979. Why not? Uh Uh-huh. Well, come over here and get into this van. At what point do you go, hmm, I don't know if that's going to be a good idea. (laughs) Right. Not happening. So you do get in the van, and then we're driving out of Reno. Right. Like, uh, I thought we were supposed to pass pamphlets out (laughs) back that way. What's Gerald, crazy is they didn't stay in one spot. It's true. Yeah. They were all over the country. Yeah. They're over the West Coast mm-hmm. killing people. Gerald would then begin raping each of the girls as Charlene watched from the rearview mirror. After Gerald was done, he told Charlene to pull the van over to a remote area. Once there, Charlene would make the girls perform sex acts on each other while she and Gerald watched. So that just goes to show you exactly how sick these two oh, yeah. are. Right. And what's crazy is, like like you said, Charlene grew up normal. Like She didn't grow up with no abuse, no yeah. nothing. Like, so you, her daddy wasn't put in a gas chamber when it was first built? No. Exactly. So I don't get how she, you know, unless she's just... Path. 
very manipulative. Or not, that's not even the word I was looking for just now. She's very naive. Naive. I would say she's just batshit crazy. Uh, (laughs) That too. Could be. So uh, after the two girls were forced to perform sex acts on each other, Gerald forced Sandra Colley out of the van and beat her to death with a shovel. Then he went back and got Brenda Judd and did the same thing to her. Gerald then dug a hole, yes, with the same shovel he just murdered the young girls with, and placed both of their bodies in it. He then placed a large rock over the makeshift grave. The bodies of Sandra and Brenda were not discovered until many, many years later in November of 1999. Wow. it's a long time. It is. 20 years. Yeah. Dang. 20 freaking years. 20 years to be set in the basically the desert mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm pretty sure a uh, a guy that was actually doing construction back on that lot like when he was digging it up found him found him oh could you imagine that'd be awful yeah at least the family's got some kind of closure though, yeah I mean right still it's not the closure you want nope the love slave killers would be silent for almost a year after those murders of uh, Sandra and Brenda until April 24th, 1980 when they abducted 17-year-old Stacy Redican and 17-year-old Karen Twiggs. Not much is known how the two were lured away with Gerald and Charlene, but police would find their bodies about three months later. Both were sexually assaulted and beaten to death. On June 6th, 1980, 26-year-old Linda Aguilar was hitchhiking when she disappeared. Now, she's hitchhiking because she's going to the doctor. She she had a doctor's appointment and needed to get somewhere, Mm -hmm. so she's hitchhiking. It's 1980. Maybe that was normal. I was just a wee, a wee, I wasn't. You weren't even alive yet. I was was a wee little sperm cell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, so she's trying to get to the doctor, basically, on that day. Uh, her husband, I believe, is at work, and she's just trying to get to the doctor. Her family would report her missing on June 8th. Two days later, on June 20th, her body was found in a shallow grave. Her hands and feet were tied with a rope, and her skull had been crushed. Mm. So her hands and feet tied with a rope, and her skull crushed. But after an autopsy was performed on Linda, it was found that she had sand in her nose, mouth, and throat, which indicated she was buried alive. Wow. That'd be awful. Yeah. So they must have thought they killed her and put her in a hole. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. The real uh, kicker to that is Linda was four months pregnant when she was Mm. murdered. Mm. Not even a month later, on July 17th, 1980, Virginia Mokel was working as a barmaid when she was abducted in the tavern's parking lot. Her skeletal remains were found in October of that same year in Clarksburg, California. With no cause of death determined, it is believed she was strangled to death because she still had the rope around her neck when she was found. That's brutal to yeah, that is. is. Like, do these two not stay anywhere? They just, they're like, all over the place. Just mm-hmm. drive and go from place to place. Yeah, that's what killer couples do. Drive around and find well, different <sighs> victims, apparently. And just their choices to murder these victims, you know, are, they're all brutal. Shovel, right. tire iron. Strangulation. Stra- yeah. Yeah. And they, they keep kidnapping, like, young teenage girls. Mm-hmm. He's got a, he's got a type. Yeah. Well, they have a type. Yeah, yeah. I think this has been the oldest ones yet, right? 17? The others were 13? Uh, Linda, Linda was 20, I believe. 20, oh, okay. 20, yeah, Linda Aguilar was 26. Was she 26? Yeah. Okay. She was the oddball. November 2nd, 1980, Gerald and Charlene would commit a heinous crime and would eventually have to answer for it. In the early morning, after leaving a frat party... 22-year-old Craig Miller and his fiancée, 21-year-old Mary Sowers, were standing on the sidewalk outside of the party. When out of nowhere, Gerald pulled up alongside them, got out, and forced both of them into his vehicle at gunpoint. Brian was driven to a secluded area where he was forced out of the car and shot three times in the head. 
Mary, however, was taken back to Gerald and Charlene's house where she was raped repeatedly for hours. Once Gerald was satisfied, he made Mary get back into the vehicle where she was driven to a rural area and shot three times at point blank range. That's awful. Mm -hmm. First time with a gun too, huh? Yeah. He's, he's making sure that... Dude, just imagine, like, the confidence you have to have to get out and just, you know, two people standing on the sidewalk and tell them to get in the car. Right. Get in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Like, take some balls to do that, especially, mm-hmm. you know, in front of a party. Yeah. Yeah, well, little did Gerald and Charlie know when they abducted Brian and Mary, there were some people from the party outside that witnessed all of it happen. And they were smart enough to write down the license plates of the vehicle and call the police. Oh, good. The police would trace the plate back to Charlene's parents' house. She would deny any involvement and give the police a fake name. Shortly after, Gerald and Charlene would skip town and go on the run. They would call home and get money wired through Western Union from Charlene's parents, which... Hey, Charlene's parents, way to be enablers. Like, uh, right, yeah. you know, the police just came questioning her and she took off and you're feeding them money. Yeah. Right. Idiots. But also, what a shit way to send somebody money. Where's my like, union? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you can get, like, you can get tied back to that. <laughs> right. Like, why are you Western Union? Well, what do you want to do? Your, to your murdering daughter. Like, mm-hmm. why? I'm just confused on what you want him to do. Put like, that shit in the... He him tie to it to he, a pigeon and send it on its way. He wanted him to use Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> Put a carrier pigeon out there. No, like, have your mom and dad meet you and slide you a couple hundred. Like, why are you putting a freaking paper trail behind it? Wow. Because uh, Charlene's parents are in California, and by this time, Charlene and Gerald are in Nebraska. Oh. So it's not like, hey, we'll meet you in the middle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when they got out of Dodge, they got out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in November, while trying to get a Western Union from Charlene's parents, the two were arrested in Omaha, Nebraska. Like I just said. What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad idea. And that's why. Because you get caught. Yeah, it is yeah. a bad idea. It's also a bad idea to kill people. <laughs> well, I, I, I know that, but... I just hope the parents got in trouble, too, for knowing where they were and sending that money. I'm going to say is probably it, not. You don't think so? No. They probably eventually turned, like, hey, that she just needs to come home. I'm sure that a deal was struck. Like, look, we know your daughter probably isn't. I mean, they probably fed a line, like... We know your daughter probably has nothing to do with this. But we need to find him. We need to find that guy. <laughs> he, we know that it's all him. You mm-hmm. just got to help us bring her home safely. And they were like, okay, they're in Omaha, Nebraska. And they're like, get him. <laughs> get him, Skeeter. <laughs> That's the way I pictured it. I mean, it might not have happened that way, but. It makes sense. It, I mean, it probably. It, it could have. It definitely did. <laughs> uh, once in custody, Charlene would turn on Gerald. Uh, which seems to always happen. Oh, in case every time. Is. And she's going to tell everything and testify against him in return for a shorter sentence. Mm-hmm. Charlene was sentenced to 16 years and eight months in prison. 16 That's years it. and on eight months. Ten. You forgot the eight months. Eight months on 10 murders. 10. Yeah. Terrible. Brutal murders. Yeah. That's our great system. That's California's. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. In January of 1981, Charlene would give birth to her and Gerald's son while in prison. The baby, Gerald Armand Gallego Jr., was sent to live with Charlene's parents. In June of 1984, Gerald was found guilty in less than four hours. I don't know why it takes four hours. <laughs> yeah. But he was sentenced to death for the murders of Karen Twiggs and Stacy Radican in Nevada. Good. In July 1997, Charlene was released from prison after serving her sentence. Boo. In July 18th, 2002, Gerald Gallego died in prison at the age of 56 from cancer. Hmm. I hope he suffered. I hope it was a bad cancer. Yeah. (laughs) 
Hey, he served uh, less than 20 years. Uh, yeah. Was was found guilty in June of 1984 and died in July 18th, 2002. Less than and a little over, uh, what, 18 yeah. in one month? Yep. Well. But you know what? If he wouldn't have died from cancer, he would still be in prison. Oh, of course. Yep. Because it's California. Yep. <laughs> We don't believe in murder and those who murders others. <laughs> you can kill us. We won't kill you back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, man. This one. This is a rough story. Now, there are uh, a lot of surviving family members that are completely pissed that Charlene. Oh, yeah. Only served the short amount of time that she did. Oh, oh I, I get it. I mean, it, still 16 years is, is that's a good, that's a good time. Good long time, but we're talking about murder, dude. We're, ten. Not, yeah. Not one. We're talking yeah. about 10. Yeah. I know that there was a story about her like a few years ago. It's probably been more than a few years ago, but she was, they found out she lived in a, like she lived next to people. You know, and like the well, town that's usually, like in a neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. it's like, usually how people yeah, like the <laughs> town. The town found out and was like outraged, and then she moved. She's like, like wait a minute, I hope, that keep, <laughs> <laughs> I hope it keeps happening. <laughs> that is a uh, that would be a devastating amount of news to find out. Like, we always loved our next door neighbor, Charlene. She's just she got <laughs> us the cookies. And she brings cookies and over when she bakes them and. <laughs> uh, we borrow sugar from her. Not knowing 10 years prior, she was yeah. murdering people uh, 20 years prior. Yeah, and you got a teenage daughter that lives at your house, and she's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, rough, that's a rough one. It is. I mean, you can understand the rage that those victims' parents. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, did she get her kid back from her parents? I don't know. There was really no information yeah. on that. Oh, okay. Whether she ever that's, got him back. That's a mystery. Mm. Maybe we should give her a call. Find out. Maybe. Do it. Think she'll talk to us? Sure. There's we'll the possibility. Not. If you know Charlene Gallego Williams, never listen to our episode. I think it would be Williams Gallego. Mm. She was Williams and then Gallego. I don't care what it is. If you know Charlene, <laughs> <laughs> he was Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just uh, I'll give her a call. And we'll figure. She's it out. actually done a lot of interviews, and during the interviews, you can literally tell she's full of shit. Oh, I'm sure. Says. Yeah, because she blamed everything on him. Yeah. yeah, she says he did all the killing. Well, I mean, yeah, he might have did all the killing, but who's the one that lured these girls? All they yeah. seen was mm-hmm. this, you know, small, older lady. Yeah. You know, right? So hey, help us pass these pamphlets out. Mm. He did it all. It was all right. his, he did it. She was driving and, and like watching. Looking, yeah, watching in the rear view. Sick bastard. Yeah, yeah that's pretty disgusting. If you don't want to be involved in that, then you drive right to a police station. Uh, like, yeah. hey, get this dude. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. She definitely got away with murder. She did. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the love slave killers, Gerald and Charlene Gallego. Mm. I just wish they were both still riding in prison, you know? Yeah. That'd be nice. I like the story. Why? I liked it. It was a good story. He did a good job telling it. He always does. You uh, you did a good job writing this one. This Thanks. was a Dustin story. What, Thanks. number three? No, I'm up to like four or five. Oh, okay. Out of 52. <laughs> <laughs> It is a good one. Yes. Uh, brutal. Definitely brutal. Oh, for sure. But that's what you sick people like. <laughs> I mean, and that's yeah. why we like you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Evil mob. That's what we're dealing with. Well, mm-hmm. Rex, what you got for us? All right. If you haven't gone to our Facebook page, please do so. Give us a like. If you have any questions, ideas, uh, you can email us at eviltransgression at gmail.com. Dustin, take it away. You can also um, join our Patreon by going to patreon.com slash eviltransgressionpodcast 
or you can go to any of our episodes and under the description there will be a link to sign up so yeah good deal Joshua join today go to our threadless store and buy your brand new evil transgression logo t-shirt yep just came out uh, well a couple couple weeks ago yeah yeah so it's on there they're soft I I got the soft. soft one and it's soft. <laughs> when they say soft, they mean it. Does it just melt around your body? It does. Mm. Just hugs it. Just <laughs> hugs it just right. <laughs> it gives you the hugs you long for. Yeah. <laughs> and people also give you strange looks when they see you in it. Like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Evil transgressions. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Well, we got any questions today? We do have a question, right? Oh. All right, so today's question comes from Stacy, and she would like to know how we all met. Well, I, it goes back to middle school. Oh, it goes way back. When uh, Rex and I met. Mm-hmm. Seventh grade? Sixth grade? It was sixth or seventh. I think seventh we had classes together. Yeah, seventh we got in trouble. Yes, we got many a times. Separated. <laughs> yeah. so, I wasn't uh, even born yet when you guys were meeting. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we we met in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Seventh grade, we had classes together, and I remember being in English class. Yeah, I won't say the teacher's name because she hates me, and I hate her just the same. <laughs> <laughs> she hated me for no reason, but Rex and I got separated to where we literally had to sit on the opposite uh-huh. corners of the room. <laughs> yes. Rex was in like the far front corner yep. and I was all the way in the far back corner. <laughs> it was the furthest distance that she could get our desks apart. Oh yeah. <laughs> she hated us for no reason. Like There was a reason. No, there was not. Literally, I got she in was trouble just evil. for uh if you guys we would have had, stopped with your tomfoolery, yeah, <laughs> that'll well, never stop. <laughs> we um, we had like silent reading time, and we had to, where you could bring your own books in. You got to choose your own books, yep. which is super cool. And um, you had to read for like half hour or something. Yep. And literally, I'm sitting there reading my book, being a good student, and this girl sitting at our group of tables. <laughs> Ask me how long we're supposed to be reading for. I don't even get a chance to answer. Like, no vocal sounds have come out of my face. Yep. Before she's like, Josh, you need to keep your mouth shut. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't even said anything. Right. So I'm like, uh, it wasn't me, which ended up getting me detentions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was how our seventh grade went. But yeah, so, but I mean, even from then on, we got in trouble in pretty much every class we were in. I'd say I mean, never bad trouble. It was no, just like it was mischief. It was funny stuff. Like we had this thing called news flashes where we'd write a story <laughs> about somebody in that classroom and pass it around the entire class. <laughs> pretty sure it would get us like, <laughs> probably jail time now. Oh, now you yeah, you couldn't yeah. do that now. No, it's bullying. Um, another. Uh, another good one was there was a girl sitting behind me and I kept bending down like I was reaching under my desk to get my book and I tied her shoelaces to her desk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when she went to get up, she tripped. The, the teacher the actually yelled at her for making too much noise. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Rex and I met. Right. And then Dustin actually married into my family. So that's I how I met you. Yep. And yep. then... You came up with this crazy idea to do a podcast, and I said, well, I know a guy that can make us sound like uh, sexual chocolate on the mic. <laughs> Rexual chocolate. Yeah. So, and that's how, that's how the three yep. of us. That's how it came to be. Yep. Got to this point. It's been a great time. It has. It has. And Very now, good. all great things come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Our farewell and final episode <laughs> of Evil Transgression. <laughs> For the week. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was a good, good question. Yeah, it's a great it was. question. Thanks, Stacy. And don't forget that you can submit your questions. We have a forum on our Facebook now where you can submit your questions. Oh, yeah. We can. Make it a little easier. And we will pick one or two. 
each week or six and just do a whole episode, <laughs> yes. a whole episode of questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Any other suggestions? Send them to us. Yep. I mean, you can you can literally contact us anyway. Email. No. Nope. Twitter. Twatter. <laughs> Instant slam. <laughs> Fake book. Fake book. Uh, MySpace. MySpace. We are not you know, on MySpace yet. I think I still have an account to that. I think I do too. I need to get on that and take a password. So. Yeah. I'm sure we could figure it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> what was it? Ass face or something? <laughs> all, all lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You got anything else? I'm done. Nope. I'm I'm good. All right, evil mom. Until next week. See ya. See ya. Peace.